In part two of our DM32 review, we'll take a look at the programming options and GPS functions of the radio. Things just got too long to include these topics in part one. Let's start out looking at the Radio Frequency Programmer smartphone app. Now there's one more thing that I want to show you uh, that's available here on this radio, and that's Bluetooth. Now you can get a hold of an app for your phone, which is the Radio Frequency Programmer. I left a message on Amazon and Baofeng got right back to me with a link to this programmer. One thing that I did not kind of mess up is my email in Amazon is different than my email into Google. And so when they sent me the link, it wouldn't let me in, but it had a request access. And so I did that within another couple of minutes. They granted me access and I was able to download this. Now it doesn't clear the Google security. So you're going to have to make a couple of changes in your setting to set this app up, but uh, it's certainly, you can do that. If you're familiar with that, Great, I'm not gonna go into that in any more detail. But this radio programmer is available for a number of radios, not just this UV32. So we're gonna start by going up here. We're gonna press here and we're gonna look for the Baofeng. We're gonna go find the UV32 Pro Series right there. And then we're going to go into our radio and we're going to go down to Bluetooth. We're going to turn it on. And then we're going to connect. It says walkie talkie. It's scanning for other devices. We're going to pick this one. The connection was successful and I want to read from the radio. So I'm going to read. The radio, as you can see, has gone into program mode. It's downloading. Now you may notice, since the initial part of the unboxing or power on tour, that I've done some programming in the radio so that you can have some more. So I'm doing this on a different day than some of that other video was. So. Uh, forgive me for that, but I wanted to have something to show you here. So at this point here, we're going to hit profile, and now we're into this familiar display if you've used this app before, and it's very similar to the TID Radio OD Master app. And so you can see that we've got the channel information. I've got several zones set up here that I can go to. I can go up here back to zone one, which for me is a local VHF, zone two is local UHF. Set your zones up the way you want. The channel number, we go here and you can see the various channel IDs here, the various things that you can do here with each of your channels. So you can see the channel name is UHF call for channel number two. If we go to channel number one, it's VHF call, the frequency. If I go to one of my repeaters, I think my first repeater, maybe, I don't know, channel five. And you can see that I've got the, the receive and the transmit and the CTCSS code, all of that is there, which allows you to program your radio using your phone pretty easily, uh, especially if you're gonna be doing a little bit more than a, just one or two channels, or if you're out in, the, out in the boonies somewhere and you wanna make a change. If we go to frequency mode, you can see what these settings are. This is the typical VFO mode when you see in a CPS. And then the optional features are all the menu items that are available for the radio. And as we'll see when we go through a little snapshot of the CPS uh, and with Chirp, um, which both work with this radio, you'll have the ability to make changes here. So these are all uh, ways that you can program the radio. You have the faceplate, You've got this radio frequency programmer, you've got Chirp, and you've got the Baofeng CPS. So it makes programming radio quite easy. I find using a CPS or customer programming software app the easiest way to program your radio right out of the box. While programming from the faceplate is not difficult, and you should definitely know how to do that, using the CPS is just easier in my opinion.
When you consider the frequency importing capabilities of Chirp, you can save yourself a boatload of time. In this clip, we'll look at both the factory CPS and Chirp. So here's a quick overview of the factory CPS for the Baofeng UV32. I'm using the UV Pro, so it's got a number of radios you use. So in this case, you look down the list, here's the UV32 Pro. You go into settings as you do with most of these and choose your port. For me, it's COM3. And then I hit red and this is what I have programmed into my radio. And so the radio comes across here with all of these very things. So if you're programming a repeater, you put the input and output. So the receive frequency for your repeater would be the repeater's output and then the transmit would be the repeater's input at a CTCSS code. Those are just done with drop down boxes as you see here. And so we've gone down here and I've got 23 channels and this is in a bank. So this radio supports banks. And so we've got the local VHF bank. If I want to move to my next bank, I've got 10 of them and I press the next button. And now I've got my radio frequencies for bank number two, which I've called local UHF. And then I've added the UHF, VHF, and 220 calls in each of these banks. And then I can go to bank number three. And this is my GMRS receive frequencies here. And I can go here. This is my local 220 in bank number four. So this is how that works now. So I can go up here to Windows and I can program my VFO standard kinds of things, uh, the frequency that it's going to come up for VFO A and VFO B and all that stuff. And then I can go up here and do radio functions, which gives me a list of all the menu items in the radio. And I can use drop down boxes uh, to do those changes as well. And so they're all listed here. And then the last is if you use DTMF signaling, and I've talked with you already about having made changes for the radio for GPS, it uses the DTMF signaling for that. So I've changed my names to contacts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I've numbered them 101, 102, and so forth. And so that's going to become handy when we use the GPS uh, in the radio. And so that's a quick overview of the factory version. So here's Chirp, and we're going to do this just to take a look because there's a couple of things about the banks that I want to point out to you. So in this case, we want to start with going to radio. We want to download from the radio. We want to pick our COM port as we normally do. We're going to pick a Baofeng radio. And we're going to pick, we're going to start by looking for the UV32 Pro, and it, I don't think it's going to be here. And instead, I'm going to use the UV21 Pro with GPS since both of these models have GPS. We'll hit OK. And the radio says programming on the faceplate. And it's downloading from the radio. So the UV21 Pro GPS is going to work with this UV32. And so here you can see we've got the channels. And so here are all those same channels that we used. Then we go down here to 101, and this is the equivalent of my local UHF bank. And we go down to 201. This is the equivalent to my GMRS frequencies. And so you can see in this one, I've got a bunch of them, the GMRS, the FRS, MERS. Um, these are the uh, marine band channels kind of filled up that bank from 201 almost to 300. And then at 301, here is my uh, channels for 220 band. And so when we look at this in the factory, you're going to give it names and it's going to move you from bank to bank. In Sherp, those banks start at the zero zero. So we've got, uh, you know, from one to 100, we've got 
want 201 to 200 and so you can put banks in here but you're going to program them in against the channel numbers and that's how that's going to work in chirp so that's important for you to know now all these are standard stock configurations so it was very easy to add into chirp it's not a chirp tutorial uh, but that's how I did it. And the same thing up here with all of these frequencies that I added in. I used the uh, query source command in Chirp to go to repeater book and uh, then cut and paste these in, making adding the frequencies into the radio much, much easier. But the thing to keep in mind here is that you've got to put them in the banks. And the banks, while you can name them in the factory CPS here, you're just going to start them at 1, 101, 201 and so forth. Again, now if we look at banks, you can see that these are how have a check mark in here. When we get down here, you can see that starting in 101, that's bank 2. And starting at 201, that's bank 3. So they are labeled here in this banks display, um, but you're just entering them in to the banks because the banks aren't flexible. It's not a master channel list that you can assign them to banks. You have to give it some thought before you start. And then in settings, all of these are here as always. And these are the same settings that we saw in the factory. Actually, I like the factory better when using settings because these are hard to see. You know, it's a long, narrow line and you have to go all the way across the screen to get to where these uh, things are. With all the other advantages that Chirp has, this is just a minor inconvenience, but certainly uh, you can make use of both of these CPSs together to make use of the importing ability in Chirp and then make use of some of the other ability in that factory CPS. So that's a quick look at the CPSs that you have available to you from your computer for the UV32. If you're finding these videos helpful, please like and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel if you haven't already. There's a join button below the video where you can learn more about becoming a channel member and a thanks button to make a one-time contribution. I really appreciate it. The other feature we need to look at is the radio's GPS function. I did a deep dive on this version of Baofeng's GPS system recently, and I'll link that on the end card to this video. The radio was different, but the system operation is the same. Here's a snapshot of the GPS in action. Okay, here we have our UV25 Plus, and you can see the uh, GPS position here. I'm going to leave this here at this end of our little green belt, and then walk down to the other end. So you can see this is contact number three. Uh, it's A and I edited 00103 or contact three. And we're going to go down to the other end and see if we can take this information and copy it onto the other radio and then send the other radios to this one. So let me set this down on the grass and uh, we'll head down there and see how we do. So my other radio is down there. It's probably just a little black dot just parallel to the tree on the left. And that's uh, enough distance that we'll have different numbers in our GPS. So this radio uh, it's also in the GPS system, and so let's send our position. Again, this radio is uh, 101 on the ANI edit or contact number one. And so now I've gone up to contact one, which is the um, host. Contact one, let's do the press to talk. And hopefully we've got that information set. So now let's go up to contact number three and this time we're going to request data and we'll see if we get that to come in and so we'll press to talk and there's the position three information 12 9 and 52.1 which i think we'll find is really close to what it was when we uh, were down by that other radio so we've sent and we've received and so here is our Baofeng UV25 Plus. I'm on contact number one, which was the other radio. And you can see that the position information of 
13.7 and 54.3 is down here. Now that screen is pretty dim right now, so hopefully that you can see that and I can get it out of the glare. But in fact, the information transferred. So with this radio, it received and then also responded to the GPS query from that other radio. So that's a quick demo of the GPS system with these little Baofeng radios. Be sure to take a look at part one of this review if you happen to stumble on this video first. It covers the rest of what you need to know about the UV32. Join me over here for the Baofeng GPS system deep dive video and I'll link the UV playlist so you can easily find the other videos in this series. Thanks for watching and 73.